for us to worship. And I don't know about you, but any time is a good time to worship God. Where are my worshipers at? I just want to give God some glory. Come on, get on your feet, get on your feet. Holy, 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 Lord. 
realize and share this link that one or two or three others may join us in order to give our God all the glory and all the praise. I feel like somebody came already on fire. The city, come on today. Let's catch on fire. Let's catch on fire as Pastor Shirley comes and offer our morning prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
church family, how are you? I am before you this morning to bring the scripture, if you would please stand. I will be reading Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, verse 7 through 9. I am reading the message version. Oh yes, God says so. Shout for joy at the top of your lungs for Jacob. Announce the good news to the number one nation. Rise, cheers, sing praises. Say, God has saved his people, saved the core of Israel. Watch what comes next. I'll bring my people back from the North Country and gather them up from the end of the earth. Gather those who have gone blind and those who have those who are lame and limp. Gather pregnant women, even mothers who birth have pain, have started. Bring them back a huge crowd. Watch them come. They will come weeping for joy. As I take their hands and lead them into the fresh flowing brooks. Lead them along a smooth, uncluttered path. Yes, it is because I am, excuse me, I'm Israel's father and Ephraim's firstborn son. This is the word of God. Let us all absorb it and use it. Amen.
morning. How you doing? Anybody excited to be in worship today? Anybody happy to be alive? You didn't come. I know you didn't come with a hang-on mentality. You just happy to be alive. Happy that God has so fit to uh, uh, allow for your eyes to see another day. And I pray that you look. Amen. You feel as good look because you look wonderful today to these eyes. Amen. 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 Praise God. Uh, I want to celebrate uh, some amongst us who are celebrating a special uh, week. Uh, Niasha Crowley. It's her birthday on the 25th. And so we want to praise God for her. Praying that God will bless her. Zayla Fistro. It's her birthday on the 26th. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I want to praise God for Zayla and all that Zayla got going on in Jesus' name. Amen. And then Precious Gibbs, her birthday is also on the 26th. I want to say happy birthday. And then on the 30th, we got three birthdays. Sandra Briscoe, it's her birthday. And Cassandra Uribe, it's her birthday. Amen. And then Tondra Martin, it's her birthday. And so we praise and thank God for all of these that are celebrating another year. After what we've gone through, it's, it's another day is to be celebrated. Let alone another year. Amen. Amen. Praise God. e -blast was sent out on last night. We ask that you please look at that closely, that you may be informed about the goings on of our church. Amen. This next Saturday, the pastor aid ministry want us to go outside. No? <laughs> want us to go outside. And as you know, we've been celebrating Pastor Appreciation Month all this month. You have two pastors regularly amongst you, both Pastor Coleman Knight and myself. And so they want us to go outside and meet them at Stevenson Park in Carson next Saturday. And check with the weather, man. It's going to be 80 degrees. Amen. They're going to feed y'all. They're going to feed y'all. And they're not going to have an offering plate or anything like that at the park. And they just want to have that well. <laughs> and they just want to have a great time. And so if you would meet them at Stevenson Park, check the e-blast for all of your information. And they want you to be uh, reserved to Sister Deborah Russell. Wave your hand, Sister Deborah Russell. Amen. They want you to reserve... Uh, to her so that they can have the appropriate amount of food for y'all. They don't want y'all to pull up and bring your cousin in them, and they don't have enough. So if you could do that for them, that's for them. If you would do that for them, they would greatly appreciate it. Amen? Amen. Youth churches meet today after at 10 a.m. on Zoom. Parents and young people, please avail yourself. We need to be intentional in that, that our young people don't fall on the wayside about learning the word of God. Amen? We send them early to school, scholastic achievement. We ought to send them so that they can get spiritual, amen, growth and development, amen. Angel Tree, Angel Tree, hear me, Angel Tree is wrapping up. Uh, Angel Tree is our project where the city of David uh, is committed to helping those inside our family and those outside our family. And we have set aside $4,500 to, to help somebody during the Christmas season. We know that that is a hard time for, for some, and so we want you to apply. We learned in Bible study on last Tuesday that we got to be our brother and our sister's keeper. And so if you know somebody, even if it's yourself, you're going through a hard time or you have gone through hard times in 2021, we want you to fill out an application. Don't allow for us to celebrate people at that time and then you say, well, what about me? When you have the opportunity to do it yourself, and this is anonymous. We won't pull you up here and say, you needed help, we helped you. You needed help, we helped you. We will give it in confidence because God sees all. Amen. Everybody know that? God sees all. And so we want to bless individuals. And so if we're talking to you or talking to somebody you know, please fill out the application so that that committee can vet and then be able to bless those individuals. Bible study happens here at the Tree of Life Missionary Baptist Church every Wednesday at 6 p.m. But if you cannot get here, feel free to join us online and watch on both our Facebook page and then following Bible study, we put it on our YouTube page. We ask that you please, the city of David is wide open. 
We ask that you please utilize the RSVP link that is sent out. Everyone should RSVP if you're coming in the sanctuary so that we can make the appropriate arrangements for all of us to do this responsibly and safe. Amen? Don't think you are special. There are no VIPs. I even RSVP because I want to be in line with you all. Amen? So I'm not going to ask you to do something I'm not willing to do myself. Know that we are getting ready to start up illegal. We apologize for the late start, parents, but know that we are being intentional and we're pressing our way with whoever and whatever we have in order to make that program be a success. It's getting ready to launch. We have all the resources we think in place. If you have already uh, signed up your young, uh, your young student, we will be contacting you with relevant details and we will even provide a backpack full of school supplies. They may already have that, put that aside, let that be when they tear that up, you already have the replacement. Amen, somebody. You already have the replacement already uh, near at hand. Lastly, this upcoming week is recognized as Red Ribbon Week. Communities and schools all over are supporting the alcohol and drug prevention campaign. Please, let's remind our young people of the risk. Many of us know that we fall through that. I wish I was talking to some real saints in here. We fall through that and now we are on the other side and we know for ourselves that our God is a keeper. Hallelujah. As we get ready to press our way to this altar, I want you to begin to type on the screen the names that you know to pray for, even if it's yourself. Amen. And the families that uh, you know that we should be praying for, I'm going to call out some names. And when I call out these names, along with the names you are typing on the screen, all together, they're coming together uh, that we may offer and lift them up to God. I'm calling on the name of Paul Scott. I'm still calling on Sister Deborah Hall and family. Calling on Bishop Kirkland and Bishop Young. Calling on Sister Eureka Young. Good to see you, Sister Shante. I'm still praying for you. Still praying for the Roseberry family. Still praying for the Benefield family. Still praying for the Gaines family, the Rogers family, the Bennett family. Good to see y'all. Still praying for the Martin family. It's good to see you, brother and Mrs. Martin. Still praying for the Wells family, DeAndre Dooley, the birthday girl, Niasha Crawley, and Kimberly Crawley, and Marilyn Wells. Still praying for Pops Ross Johnson. Still praying for the Strong family. Still praying for Mother Paulina Brooks. Praying for Daryl May, Reginald Alexander, Mama Vera Harper, Brother Troy Nelson, Sister Sabrina. Still praying for Pamela Sims and Lola. Still praying for Taisha Harvey and family. Still praying for the May family. Kiasha Macklin, Michelle Johnson, and Ken Stanberry, Sister Carolyn Johnson, and Willis, and Al Johnson, and Brother Ray May, and Marcin May. Still praying for Mother Esther Daniels, Mother Ali Frazier, Sister Barbara Loran. Still praying for Sister Willa Dash, little Tyler Dash. Praying for you, Brother Andrew Ireland, Dr. Karen Ireland, Dr. Tobias Johnson, Sister Kanita Lewis. Still praying for you, Mother Alma Thomas. Our mother of our church, as she get ready to celebrate 100 years old. The Lord has blessed you. Still praying for you, Yolanda Robinson and the entire Robinson family. God is able. Still praying for you, Barbara Sparrell. Still praying for you, Nikita Sample and Brother Marquis and baby Elijah. Still praying for you, Brother John Downey, Brother Walker Posey Jr., Sister Don. Still praying for you, Mother Basha Johnson. Elder Marcus Johnson and the Johnson family. Still praying for the McCray family. Praying for uh, Richard Griffin. Praying for the Wyndham family. Praying for Brother Sammy Davis. Praying for Sister Wanda, Sister Kia Anderson. Praying for Uncle Nate. Nate Dog, Nate Robinson. Praying for Uncle Gus Briscoe. Praying for Veronica and Imani Hayes. Praying for you, Boozy Briscoe. Praying for you, Booker T. Stanley. Praying for you, Eloise Tennant. James says that the fervent, effectual prayers of the righteous will avail much. And I'm here to remind somebody what makes it fervent has nothing to do with the loudness on the lip. Has nothing to do with your, what makes it fervent is the faith that is associated. Come on, let's lift up some stuff to God this morning and we get a release. Realize that God can handle it and do it exceedingly and above. Hallelujah. Come on, pray in this house.
that our righteousness is filthy as rags, God. But we come broken as we might be, God, declaring that we have found peace and rest in you, God. Believing by faith, God, that the blood, it still works. It'll reach, God, from the highest mountain to the lowest valley, God. And so we praise you this morning and we give you glory, God, that your grace has proven this week to be sufficient in our lives. We thank you, God, for the danger we saw with our own eyes and the stuff we had no idea was being plotted and schemed against us, God. We are only here in this moment, in this hour, God, because of you and your goodness, your love and kindness toward us. And so that's why we have paused this morning, God, to pray towards you, God, to look toward the hills and realize everything we need will come from you, God. We declare right now, God, that you have already blessed us, God, by your hand with everything we have needed, God. If we needed it and don't have it, it was because you didn't desire for us to receive it, God. But because we are here standing, you kept pushing them, God, telling them to run on just a little while longer, God, telling them to hang in there. And so we thank you this morning, God. We give you glory this morning, God. We praise you. This morning, God, for being a keeper this week, God, for being a blesser this week, God, the roof that was over our head is because of you, Lord. The clothes that was on our back is because of you, God. The fort that had food on it, God, it was because of you, God. The joy bells that's in our heart is because of you, God. The peace that's on our mind, God, is because of you. With all the hell that we're going through, God, we still, we still, we still are here. Morning, God, because of you, and so if nobody else desire to praise you, we have come to praise you this morning, God. The city of David has come to magnify you this morning, God, because you have been a prayer answering God. You have been a deliverer, God. You have been a mind regulator. You have been a heavy load carrier, God. You have been a heart fixer, God. You have been God our joy man. You have been our strength when we thought about giving up and we thought about throwing in the towel. And now we are here this morning with a praise on our lips. Now we are here this morning, God, with a clap in our hands. Now we are here this morning with a dance in our feet, God, because you have been that good. Move in this house one more time, God. Move that we might see signs and wonders miracles and blessings move right now God that we might see a deliverance in a healing move right now God that we might see one or two no 100 be saved move right now God that the enemy might back off and because we know you are amongst us God we have boldness this morning to tell the enemy devil get thee behind me devil in the form of any worker of iniquity get thee behind me Devil in the form of depression, diabetes, heart, a heart disease, get thee behind me. Devil in the form of cancer, devil in the form of dementia, get thee behind me. City has come to magnify you this morning, God. City has come to worship you. Devil in the, in the, in the, in the form of low self-esteem, get thee behind me. We are more than conquerors in you, Christ Jesus. And we shall and we will, God, be blessed by you this week, God. And we declare the work that you have started in us, God. It shall and it will be completed. And no matter how we might try to block it, no matter how the enemy might try to block it, it will come. And because we know it will come, we're not going to wait till it manifests. One or two are going to shout right now. One or two is going to praise you right now. One or two is going to give you glory right now. One or two is going to dance right now. One or two is going to leave right now. All oh, your words they got. All oh, your words they got. From the rising of the sun, your word is just going down to the same. God, your word. God, your word. God, your word. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. You're worthy, God. Now we ask right now, God.
God, that you not just do it for us. Our shout this morning, God, is for every family member connected to us, God. Every friend circle connected to us, God. Even for our enemies, we ask that you bless them, God, that they would get in line with your will, God, and what you're doing in this season. God, go in the hospital room and bless, God. Go in the jail cell right now, God, and bless. Go in the unhoused tent right now and bless. Go on the side of the road right now and bless. Bless the elders that are amongst us, God. Bless the babies that are amongst us, God. And bless everybody that's in between right now, God. We lift up covenant marriages right now under the sound of my voice, God. That this season will be a blessed season, God. And that anything coming to distract that union right now, we curse and call it the devil right now. We bless families under the sound of my voice right now, God. That our families will be healed and whole right now, God. That we will be able to come together not for the celebration of a life, God. But we'll be able to come together just at any time, God. And bask in how you're keeping us together, God. How you are bending us together, God. How you are fortifying us together, God. Now we pray, God, for our church, the city of David, God. Let every ministry under the sound of my voice be blessed, God. Let every dream and every goal and every aspiration we might have, God, be blessed. We know we in the wilderness, God, but we have a made up mind. We're going to praise you in the wilderness, God, that when we get to the promised land, God, we'll be able to declare, God, it was nobody but you, God. Nobody but nobody but you, God. No, nobody. and 
at international levels. He has been blessed to travel the world, ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ through preaching and singing. Above all, Cecil's greatest joy is seeing souls added to the kingdom of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Though anointed, effective, and innovative approaches, Cecil Thompson Ministries seeks to spread the message of the agape, unconditional love of Jesus Christ. After our next selection by the choir, the next voice you will hear is Pastor Cecil Chow Thompson. So I preach
we love you. Why we're going to say what I feel, Father, it is at the entrance of your word that we find spirit and we find life. Thank you for these next few moments that you shall hide us behind the cross that your people will see you and hear you. And that the words that we declare will change these that are hearers and doers of your word. Thank you, kind Father, in Jesus' name, that men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And so we thank you now for this time in your word. Help us, Lord, illuminate the word so that it may penetrate our hearts, and that in the end we will leave renewed, revived, refreshed, rejuvenated, restored, replenished in Jesus' name. And we thank you in advance for the victory. Come on, clap your hands and thank your God. As you get ready to go to your seat, I know you have to keep your mask on, but just tell a neighbor you're in the right place at the right time with the right people for the right cause. Turn around and tell another neighbor you're in the right place at the right time, with the right people, for the right cause. We honor the Lord. Amen. Amen. For the City of David Community Church, I'm at home this morning, so I don't feel any, any necessity to uh, be anyone but myself. I honor the Lord so much for my covenant big brother. I think everybody just about now knows how much Pastor Danico Fitzgerald means to me. Can you help me celebrate our pastor? Oh, come on, it's National Pastor Appreciation Month. We've got a good one here. We've got a good one. We've got a good one here. We salute you today, bro, and we love you. And you know how much you mean to me, and we want you to know, hallelujah, that we're still declaring the word of God that I have not seen, and ear have not heard, and neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has in store for Pastor Domingo. And the reason why we get excited about that, Sister Karen, is because when the Lord blesses our pastor, it's an automatic come up for us. We should always be excited about the Lord looking out for Sherry Ashley for his man and woman servant because the oil flows from Aaron's beard. And so if my pastor's driving a good car, I mean, it's just in the vicinity. I, if my pastor's living large, I got, to, I got next. Tell your neighbor, I got next. We honor you, big bro. We thank God for Pastor Shirley Coleman Knight. God bless you. 80 years young, and we were not able to be here to celebrate your birthday, but thank you for extending that invitation to us, and we love and honor you, and you are a testament to the scripture with a long life will he satisfy you, and we pray for good days ahead. I thank God for the first family. Love you, Mom. Good to see you this morning, and all of the first family growing sins and sins. Amen. And thank God my mothers are here. And that lady with me to call us, my mother Jacqueline, Sister Heidi, Missionary Ashley, just a handful. I know that it is, uh, oh, I didn't see you back there, Auntie. Uh, I know that it is peculiar to, hey, let lady see you back there, Lord Jesus. Yeah, it's a broadest thing, praise God. <laughs> uh, I know that we are living in peculiar times. And the climate has changed. Last year when I shared the word of God with you and I'm hearing to the word this morning, we're going to go to Psalm 126, verses 1 through 6. Psalm 126, verses 1 through 6. Last year when I shared the word of God, it was just about four of us in the sanctuary. And so thank God now the, the uh, limitations have been extended just a little bit, but we want to still honor our guidelines and so just a handful of us are here this morning to fellowship with you and what can be said about this dynamic music ministry I always enjoy my sister Rose and these awesome musicians God bless you Rose doing a fantastic job and all of the singers God bless you this morning Psalm 126 verses 1 through 6 Psalm 126 verses 1 through 6 I I uh, I'm a proud son of the late Bishop Michael Broadus, and it is nostalgic, I know, for Elect Lady and I to be here today. We kind of, uh, well, me in particular, grew up here. My late father, the late Bishop Broadus, uh, had a dear best friend who passed before him, the late pastor, William David Lowe, who pastored this church for almost 30 years, the Tree of Life Baptist Church. And so when I pulled it, it looks a little different, praise God, but it looks good. 
when I pulled up in here, I was like, Lord, Jesus, the memories that begin to flood my mind. Now, you know you got to love God to be on 97th and walk at home. So I'm just, you know, at 8 o'clock in the morning, you come to Watts. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you can laugh in church. Praise God. Psalm 126, verses 1 through 6. And when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Just look at my neighbor and tell one neighbor, neighbor, preacher gonna preach about the Lord knows when. Be seated. Say that word. Say that word. The Lord. Knows when. knows when. It is my absolute conviction that God's knowledge and sense of timing has long been a discussion of theological works. The Lord knows. God knows. He is the omniscient God. He is the God that is all-knowing. He knows everything from the end to the beginning. It is comforting to say the Lord knows when, especially when we don't. It is important, sisters and brothers, to know that God knows when so that we may rebuke the tendency that lives in our lives as chaos. We wake up every morning and we don't know what in the world we are going to see. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what calamity is going to meet us outside of our doors. There is, even in our midst, a feeling of uncertainty. There's a pensiveness, if you will, that's inherited in our spirits right now, sitting on the edge of our seats, not knowing what's going to happen next, but knowing and reminding ourselves that God is omniscient. Yeah. And that he has a plan and a schedule and he has a sequence and the schedule gives us comfort now whether he chooses to share it with us or not now that's something of another subject for God often knows things and chooses not to share them with us. Like parents don't share everything with their child. It is possible to have information and not share it with someone. The Lord knows when. It's just like children riding in the back seat of a car, you know, and they keep asking over and over again, are we there yet? Are we there yet? They are comforted in riding in the car because they trust the driver. They're just anxious. They're nervous. They're excited and they are ready to reach their destination. And I don't know this morning, City of David, whether we are there yet or not. I don't know whether we are at the end of our suffering or the beginning. I don't know if we have come to the end of our sacrifice, but I know who holds the wheel. And here is what I have to do. I must wait on the omniscient God. When, however, sisters and brothers, is also a promise. God has a win. Hunt your neighbor, tell your neighbor, God has a win. Whatever I am going through, sooner or later, God has a set date. He's not just making this up as he goes. He's not figuring it out. He's not just responding to your moves and your actions and the attacks of the enemy on your life. He's not making it up as he goes. You are not at the mercy of your detractors, your critics, your haters. God knows when. He has an appointed time. Job says the Lord knows the way that I take and when he has tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. When 
He has tried me. God knows when. I will not burn in the purifying process. Every impurity and all slug and everything that is not supposed to be attached to me will burn off of me. Anything that will weaken my value, anything that will cause people to look at me strange will automatically burn off of me because God knows when. From the book of Job, the oldest book of the Bible, to the book of Revelation, you will see this subject of timing. No, Job is not the first book of the Bible chronologically, but in its original writing, it is the oldest book. Can I teach my lesson this morning? Notice what Revelation 2 says. Revelation 2 says, and unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, these things said the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the some of you into prison that ye and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown of life. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, it's the ten days for me. It's the, it's the ten days for me because Jesus says, and unto the angel of the Lord. Ten days gets me happy because it's good to know that before I got in it, God had already given me a schedule to come out of it. Oh, you will have tribulation, but God is saying to us, I have a timer on your trouble. And here's what he tells us to do. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. So from the first book of the Bible to the final book of the Bible, we see the same thing. From the very beginning to the end, God has a watch. Solomon declares in Ecclesiastes to everything, there is a season, a time under the heaven. Everything is on schedule. I'm right where I'm supposed to be. I'm going through what I'm supposed to be going through because God has a season and a time when. And the Lord knows when. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. We were drifting on a memory. <laughs> As one of the songs of ascents, we imagine these words in the mouths of pilgrims on the way to or having arrived at Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the place of peace. All they had as they were blood shackled and chained were memories. They had left the city of peace and gone into a plague of adversity. And not only had they left Jerusalem, but they did not leave under their own auspices or on their own accord. They were drugged in chains by the Babylonians into captivity. They promised Jerusalem, if I forgive thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. And when they came down near to the river of Euphrates, uh, there they saw the willow trees and they hung their hogs on the willow trees and they wept. All of us have gone through seasons of mourning. It's a season of struggling. Somebody shout seasons. Uh, seasons. Now a few seconds or a couple of hours. It's seasons of weeping. Things that happen to you that you can't shake off in a month or two. These things that come to shake you. They're called seasons. The children of Israel, Israel were in a season of weeping and bleeding and suffering. They asked them to sing. Uh, how can you sing the Lord's song in a strange land? On top of all of what they were going through, they were then asked to perform. There is a degree of pain that you encounter at time, a city of David that causes you to shut down everything. There are some levels of discomfort that you will not be able to function in. There are some things, yes, true enough, uh, that you can operate with, but then there are some levels of sorrow that are so grotesque. Do I have a witness in here? They're so demonstrative, they're so bitter that you ask the question, how can we sing the Lord's song in a 
strange land. And all we could hear from the children of Israel was weeping. And there is a cry, sisters and brothers, that takes you into a place where you wonder, will I ever reach my place of joy? I wish I had some real ones in the house this morning. Because the worst thing for me to be in is my winter experience while you're going through your spring experience. And here you come telling me, child, the Lord going to work it out for you. And I'm in the season of pain and you're in the season of progress. And if I am honest, I want to tell you, shut up. Sometimes you are in a season of weeping and all you can do is cry. And Pastor Fitzgerald, I had to preach this morning to you because I understand the season that you're going through. There is a time, brothers and sisters, when God says enough is enough. You've had enough trouble. You've had enough trials. You've had enough issues. And I'm glad to know that God has a time to bring me out of my weeping. Did you hear the bell this morning? Did you hear the sound of the abundance of rain? God speaks to the children of Israel right in the middle of their suffering, right in the middle of Babylonian captivity, and he says, enough is enough. I let you be drugged out of your own homeland. I let you be shackled like animals. I let your men be castrated and your women be raped. I let you weep at the willow tree and I did nothing to stop it. But God said, I kept my eye on the watch. And when the Lord turned again our captivity, I'm almost through here. The psalmist writes about the turning of the captivity. He has no idea how God did it. You see, the fall Babylon represents the end of the Neo-Babylonian Empire after it was conquered by the Archimedean Empire. Watch this family. I want you to see this. The people who conquered Jerusalem got conquered. <laughs> the Archimedeans were Persians. They were nomadic Persians that after 70 years of Babylonian captivity, they came in and conquered the conquerors. God has a way of bringing justice in the middle of your captivity, doesn't he? In 539 B.C., God said, enough is enough. God used the son of Princess Lobache Marbuck. God used them to wreck havoc. Look, look at this, look at this, look at the scripture. And you will see the Babylonian Empire came down. The Roman Empire came down. The Cushite Empire came down. Kingdoms fall, nations fall, empires crush. And every high place in your life, God said to tell you this morning, he's going to bring it down. It doesn't matter how long you've been in what you are in. When God gets ready to shut it down, it's got to come down. Look at this pandemic. Look at how God used a bug from a bird to shut down the whole planet. I don't know what God's getting ready to use to fight with. Because God doesn't have to use the same thing to get the victory. He doesn't need a deacon. He doesn't need a church mother. He doesn't need a pastor or a prayer warrior. When God gets ready to bring you he might just use an adulterer. He might just use a whoremonger. He might just use a harlot like Rahab. He might use the jawbone of an ass. He may use two fish and five loaves of bread. But when God says now is the time, he will use whatever he needs to bring you to your appointed place. So bring not yourself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green earth. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light. 
Yeah. <laughs> 
pray, I pray that God continue to restore you, Mother, day by day, day by day, day by day. I pray God continue to restore you. In fact, my prayer is that it's better this time than it was that time. Because I heard after. I heard after. I pray speaking into your life. He poured out like that. Still hurt. You must back. God called fit to call his grandmother home. Preaching in pain. Months after. Folks probably have stopped calling, stopped texting. Folks that told him they would be there with him at the service. Ain't been found. But you allowed me to just pour into my friend. God, I pray right now, God. That even as he presses his way through the valley, that you continue to send signs to him, affirming his life, that he is only walking through the valley. And after he get out, there's blessings with his name on him. After he gets done with the grief, there's a miracle with his name on him. After he's done with the hurt of God, you have bestowed upon him purpose and assignment and work and blessings that shall come to pass. He can't stop it. His enemies can't stop it. His critics can't Amen. 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 
praise God. Bible study this Wednesday, Bible study. We're still in the book of Zechariah 7 11. Get there, and God has a blessing with my name on it. All mine is clear. All mine is clear. Good to see all of you in this house. Good to see all of you, all of our guests. Just wave your hands so the city of David can know that you. I see guests in this house. Thank you for coming. I see guests. My cousin in is back now. Two brothers are sitting on the same road with mama. Don't tell me God won't do it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Come on, stand all over this house. Y'all got to go and get those grits. Pastor Cecil Thompson is coming to give our benediction. And then we're out of here. Hallelujah. extended invitation. Thank you, my city family. I love my city family. With our minds on Christ, Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. Thank you for the engrafted word upon our hearts, the revelatory word. Father, we pray now that you give us a good week this week. Bless us and keep us, sustain our homes, keep us covered in your blood until we meet again at the appointed hour. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth now and forevermore. And all God's people say, thank God. Amen. Look at my neighbor, tell your neighbor, the Lord knows.